In this video, you'll learn how to create various horizontal scroll effects in Figma. We'll differentiate between a simple horizontal scroll and a snap effect. The difference lies in the positioning of the individual elements. In the first version, the position is variable, while in the second version, it's precisely defined. If you're interested in using this effect for your app, you'll find a download link for a free Figma file in the video description. Now, let's dive into Figma, and I'll show you how to create these effects. When you open the file from the video description, you will land on this page. If you click on the page named Tutorial, you will find two screens. Select one of these screens and click Preview to try out the embedded horizontal scroll effect. In our first screen, we have integrated a simple horizontal scroll. The elements can be moved around freely and do not follow any specific logic. You can create this effect with just a few clicks. If we look at the second screen in effect, we will notice a significant difference. If you want to move to the next element, you can't just scroll. Instead, you have to drag to a certain point for the next element to automatically snap into place. The element always locks into a specific position and stays fixed there. This effect is much more popular in app development than a simple horizontal scroll effect and requires a bit more effort. However, if you want to create a realistic app prototype, you won't be able to avoid this version. To help you understand how to create this effect, I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide. First, we create a new page. Next, click at the bottom on Frame and create a smartphone frame. In our example, it's an iPhone 13 mini. Then we select Frame again and create an area that extends to the edge of our screen. Let's also add a background color. The default color is white, but we'll change it to gray. Next, we redefine the width of our frame. For this, click on the field on the right side and enter minus 32. This automatically recalculates the size to 343 pixels. Now, we place the frame in the center, giving it a 16 pixel margin on the sides. We click again in the width field and enter minus 16. This creates the necessary space for the additional frames we'll insert. Next, we select our Shape tool and create a rectangle within our frame. We place it in the center and color it slightly darker for better visibility. Then, we pull the frame we just created out of our iPhone frame and duplicate it. Next, we select the Shape tool again and create a circle. We place it in the center and assign it a dark color. Now, let's repeat the process one more time. We duplicate our frame, select the Shape tool, and create a triangle this time. After finishing this, we select each individual frame and create a component. To do this, click at the top right on Create Component. Once that's done, select all three components and click Combine as Variants. This combines three separate components into a single component with three variants. Now, we copy one of these variants. To build the basic structure, we first place the variant outside our iPhone frame and copy it. Now, we switch between the different variants. Then, we select all three variants again and combine them using Auto Layout. We adjust the spacing between elements to 16. The margin on the left and right sides is also set to 16. We then drag this new Auto Layout frame into our iPhone frame. As we can see, the Auto Layout frame is still too wide. We now adjust it to match the width of our first frame. For the next step, it's essential that the Auto Layout frame remains selected. Then, we choose Prototype on the right side and set Overflow to Horizontal. To see a proper preview, deselect all elements and choose Prototype again. Now, we can select an iPhone 13 mini and change the background to white.
Next, we select our iPhone frame and click on Preview at the top right. Now, if we scroll right and left, we can view all the other frames, but they do not have fixed positions and move freely. Next, I'll show you how to give these frames fixed positions. To do this, we copy our iPhone frame and drag the frames out of it. Then, we select our Frame tool and create a frame with the same width as our iPhone. We then pull this out again and place our variants inside. We align them exactly at the edges and resize the frame to the exact dimensions we need. Next, we select our Auto Layout frame and disable Auto Layout. Now, we are left with a single frame and our three variants. Click on Clip Content to show the variants. Let's copy the frame now. Next, we select our variants and move them evenly to the left. The first variant is placed just outside our frame. To make it clearer, we add a white background color to our frames. Now, we copy our frame a third time. Select our variants again and move them to the left. The margin on the right should be 16 pixels. To check this, we enable Dev Mode. The margin is still at 17. So, we select all three variants again and move them one pixel to the right. Now, we have three frames with three different positions of our variants. Next, we select all three frames and enable clip content on the right side. This makes everything a bit cleaner. The variants are not gone, they are just hidden again. Next, select our first frame and click on Prototype at the top right. Now, draw a connection between our first and second frame. A window opens and we select On Drag at the top. Change the animation type to Push. Also, change the direction. Additionally, make sure to check this checkbox. We repeat the same steps for our second frame. Draw a connection. Select On Drag and leave the other settings as they are. Then, select the second frame again and connect it back to frame 1. Again, set on drag and change the animation direction. We do the same with our third frame. Connect it back to frame 2 and set on drag. The direction is saved, so we can leave it as it is. Now, we switch back to design mode and select the first frame. We convert it into a component. We do the same with the other frames. After that, select all components and combine them into a single component. Next, select the first variant, copy it, and place it inside our iPhone frame. Now, we can select our iPhone frame and preview everything. And as we can see, everything works perfectly. Our elements have fixed positions, and when dragging, they realign automatically. Finally, we can tidy up our workspace and reorganize everything.
What I also want to show you is why we made everything into components. If you change the content of the frames, they are automatically updated everywhere. This saves you a lot of time and effort if you use this effect and redesign your elements. And that's it for the tutorial. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can find a download link for this file in the video description. And if you liked this video and want to learn how to build professional apps in Figma, then I would like to recommend my video course to you. On my website, appcourse.io, you will find over 150 videos where I show you everything you need to know. You will get access to videos, Figma files, and a Discord group where I personally help you achieve your goals. If I have piqued your interest, then feel free to check it out. There is free access available for everyone. And with that, goodbye and see you in the next video.